Hello everyone and welcome to Nespresso Coffee Talk. I'm Felicia Fitzpatrick, Playville's social media director, and I am like overwhelmed by the talent that is radiating from this side of the room. I am here with two-time Oscar nominee Michael Shannon and six-time Tony Award winner Audra McDonald, and we're chatting about Frankie and Johnny in the Claire de Lune. Hi. Hello, Hi. y'all. <laughs> um, you, as I was saying, the talent is radiating, but you guys are also working with a titan of the theater, Terrence McNally. What has it been like, you know, working with him in the rehearsal room? Because it's not every revival that you get to work with the playwright. He's very sweet. He always seems so tickled by everything. <laughs> really? Yeah. He, he keeps saying, you know, I really, I want, I really do want to give you a hard time. I'm trying. I, I can't. <laughs> but you, you're just making me so happy. Yeah. It's just nice to, to hear that right from the horse's mouth. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to, I mean, for us to, you know, any questions we have about what he was thinking, he's right there, we can ask him, you know, yeah. to hear the, you know, where in his heart this play, you know, came from, or, you know, the, the, the motivation for writing this play. Right. Um, and I, you know, in my years in the theater, I, I can't think of a person who is less jaded about mm. the theater than Terrence McNally. And you'd think that that shouldn't be the case. Right, for someone, right. I, and uh, you know, he's had incredible success, but someone who's just been in the theater for as long as he's been in mm -hmm. the theater. Um, but he is still, a, you know, a wide-eyed, you know, inspired young boy from Texas um, yes. in, terms of, in terms of his just awe of the theater and of actors and um, of, of the art, um, which is, it's infectious. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. yeah. And of course, he has ties to music. You guys both have roots and ties to music. Um, so how do you feel like your relationship with music has evolved with working on this show? I don't know. I have a record player in my dressing room. Mm. I listen to records. Before the show? Before and after, yeah. Mm. So relax afterwards, put on a record. It's funny though, uh, there is a lot of music in the show and yet the characters both admit that they don't know much about music mm -hmm. or even listen to music very much. Yeah. yeah. So it's really yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah, and there's something <laughs> about the fact that this one night, for some reason, music plays this enormous part in their life. Right. Uh, where, I mean, they mention a little bit, you know, what their actual interests in music are. Um, but but they're even, even those seem occasional. Yeah, I don't think I think there are probably days where you never, you don't listen to any music at all. Yeah, except maybe what we hear playing at work. Yeah, mm. yeah. I assume there's probably some crappy music going. Yeah, or mu Muzak there. probably yeah, in yeah. the in the eighties <laughs> would have been like Muzak in the restaurants right. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a very what a but weird. For whatever word, reason, yeah. that radio happens to be on that station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the other really weird thing. It's not like she said it there; it just happened to be there. Maybe it was fate. Maybe. There you go, there's the theme, <laughs> there's the theme. Wow. <laughs> and then what is the, what is the first thing you're thinking right as the lights come up? Like what, as it, I mean, I've seen the show, so I know what happens in the first scene, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But you're like about to take on this journey together, it's just you two uh, in the whole show. So what is that moment like for you guys? We got pretty used to it pretty fast, it seems like. You had to. Mm -hmm. And thank God the lights don't come all the way up. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know what? Someone asked me uh, yesterday. I think about you know what is it like you know being nude on stages. I'm, I can I can imagine what the bads are, but what are the goods? And I said mm -hmm. one of the good things about it, you know, sometimes it's easy to have your mind drift. You know, when you get used to doing a show or finding a way to focus or making sure you're truly in the moment and not nothing's you know by rote. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing nudity it, it you cannot help but be in the present right because right. I, I mean all of your senses are saying you are completely exposed and vulnerable and you're as vulnerable as you yeah. will ever be right um, and so that forces you into a, a sense of absolutely being in the present which is helpful for an actor because that's where you want to be at all times so if you're I'm doing all my shows naked <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's so much easier. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all that's been missing from yeah, my yeah. work, yes. But yeah, I think that's the one good thing about it. Yeah. 
Well, come see these two geniuses be present um, and be clothed as well. Um, come <laughs> see them in Frankie and Johnny and the Claire Loon, now playing at the Broadhurst Theatre. Thank you, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.